everyone, this is Ms. Schneider, Chief Strategist of MarketGage.com, weekly installment for CMC Markets. And um, we're going to cover clearly what happened last week into this week and how beautifully our real motion indicator worked. Now, of course, today is April 16th, end of the trading day. So if we just go back a little bit to April 9th, which was the last time I made the video for you, this is not the cash market. I'll show you the cash market. But what we're seeing right here is how predictive the real motion indicator was when it broke down under the 50, even though price was far from the 50, that was your classic bearish divergence. And of course, now if we look at current time, we've had two days under the 50, so clearly that's been confirmed. But more interestingly is now we're breaking down under the 200 in yet another bearish divergence while the 200-day moving average sits here, really, really far from the current levels right now, some actual 400 or so uh, points away. That would be a devastating move lower, but not ruling it out. Nonetheless, let's take a look at the cash market. If we have a look over here right now, what we can see obviously is that based on that momentum indicator, and now that we're in a clear caution phase, this horizontal line that was drawn really basically at the closing price is interesting at 50-50 because it also corresponds with this high here and it also corresponds with the day when that high was taken out with one retracement to it and then another move up. So it's possible that 50-50 could be it. Could be. It's a little oversold. The question is, if we're going to have a little bit of a bullish bias above 50-50, really now we still have to be somewhat of a sell of rallies given that bearish divergence, number one. And number two, the fact that we are in this caution phase. So your next real area, if we can hold 50-50, you might see a little bit of uh, resistance up at around the 50-80 level, but really it's going to be that 51-17 level where the 50-day moving average is going to prove whether or not this thing has the legs to go higher. Now, if it breaks 50-50, clearly we could see 50-20, uh, but 5,000 would really be probably the next point. That would be the low at this day right here or darn close to it. And then, of course, under 5,000, then we're looking at these lows down here, which really basically corresponds. There's a lot of movement here at um, the, the 49 52 level. That's a big drop, but still can happen very quickly. And then, of course, under 49.52, we're looking here at around 48.70. Ultimately, I'm looking at 4,800 as possibly the area because that is exactly where this whole thing really started breaking out. So under 50.50 could be negative, hard to say where. I would say probably 5,000 first stop. Above 50.50, maybe we see 50.80, but really, like I said, rubber meets the road over 51.70. Okay, so now looking at the gold chart, again, I'm not showing you the cash, but I think it's really important for you guys to see that in this case, the momentum is just going straight up. So this 2400 obviously is going to be pivotal, 2380 will be another area to watch. But over that 2400, we had that one little spike up to around 2430, 2440, but beyond that, we don't really know because we are in uncharted territory. So if we go to the actual futures chart, in the cash market, what we can see is that we didn't quite get that close over that 2400 with today's high being just slightly below it. This is cash now at 2398. So if we get that close over 2400, we can look at this spiky high right here at 2431 as probably your next point. And, uh, and from there, of course, like I said, uncharted territory. If we cannot, then we have to look at this price right here, which was the low of today at around 2364. We break down uh, under that 2398 to 2364. Then I think we're looking at maybe a retest of around 2325. Do I think this can go to 2300? Absolutely. But nonetheless, at this point now, to me, with this doji day and somewhat indecision, what that's telling me, and by the way, if we look at the actual closing price, is 2380 is your pivotal number. Above, have more of a bullish bias. Below, more of a, I wouldn't call it bearish bias, but at least looking for some kind of a day trade to the uh, downside. 
Now the same picture with silver I'm showing you is because if you look at the momentum here where the gold momentum is going straight up, this had a little bit of a dip today, but then again so did price. So what's interesting about silver, first of all, is that it did get up here to a high of like 29.90, just shy of 30. Um, and that was, again was Friday. Uh, that was the day before, obviously, we didn't know whether or not Iran was going to send the missiles, and of course they did. So here, if we look at today, it's not anything significant in terms of candle formation, but just in terms of price alone, if we look at the close from yesterday, that 2870, we're going to call that our pivotal number. 2870, even though we close below it today, it gets back above that. I would say you have to have a bullish bias, but we're going to look at the cash in the moment. Um, if it can't, obviously, let's take a look and see what's going to happen in terms of cash. If we go to the cash market right here, what we can see is that even though the momentum is reflected as we saw here with a little bit of a price movement down, certainly nothing too alarming, this could completely switch and go back up tomorrow, including the momentum. But let's call that 2870, as we just mentioned, somewhat pivotal. If we can't get above there and we try at least maybe up to 2850, then we have to say at 2850, can it get through there? That would be your first point of resistance through there, 2870. And then, of course, we'll be looking at again now at that 29. 90. Below 2850, and right now where you can see where it closed, below uh, 2815, then of course we're looking back at the 28 number, and if 28 breaks, then we're looking, I think, probably somewhere in this area here at around 2770. If that fails its support, then of course probably the best support we're going to see after that is down at 2720. But remember now, momentum in this may have waned a little, but can easily flip right around. Now, if we go to crude oil, again, we'll look at the cash market. But what's so interesting about this is we did have that golden cross that we had mentioned um, to you last week on April 9th. Look what the momentum has done. Even though the price is still going sideways, the momentum went to test exactly at the Bollinger Band, which means if we get any kind of move lower here, we're going to see maybe another type of mean reversion trade. Um, it has to have some follow through. The last time we saw an actual mean reversion trade was really here and it didn't really go anywhere. So I wouldn't necessarily say that the momentum is so key that we have to worry about it. What's telling me now is that we hit supported momentum and a down move would then create some kind of mean reversion. But unless that happens right now, what we can say is that crude oil is holding 85 and that's very pivotal. So let's go to the cash chart. And here is that $85 that we're talking about, which turns out to be extremely pivotal. We've closed above it. So I'd, let's call that 85 pivotal. And if, as long as we hold above it, then we have to think, even with all the sloppy action, that it's still got a bias of going up. And if we really wanted to put some kind of refinement on that number, we could say even above today's high, uh, which of course is over 86.15. So in between 85 and 86.15, I would say that we'd have to look at 85.80 as our first real pivotal number. And of course, underneath where we close today, 85.40, we could get that test of 85. And then if we break down under 85, notice the, bot the bottom of this wick here is in line with the candle from this day. So if we just take a look at that level right here, we're really looking at a move down to about 84.30, 84.25 next. So let's end with a look at the currency pair, the dollar yen, since we've been following it along. And you can see, obviously, that this thing has been flying. The dollar has been another place for a safety haven. And of course, it hasn't really impacted the gold market either, a strong dollar or even higher yields. But it has definitely affected the Japanese yen. Some think there might be some kind of a bank intervention on this. We don't know. But what we do know is that if we look at the momentum, and again, we go back to that April 9th when we started to see it clear the 50 in terms of the momentum for the dollar. Once it got obviously up here, that was the big day when the dollar really flew. And since then, if we take a look at the last couple of days, we still see an inclining momentum. So there's nothing in this chart really to show that the dollar won't continue to get stronger to the end at this point. But let's take a look at cash and see if we see something different. So what I like to do is go back and look at some of the 
historical levels and to see if there's anything that we can look at. And of course, we are seeing some real strength in the dollar against the yen. But if we go back a little bit in time right here, what we're looking at as 151.82. So we knew that it broke out over 150 and then 151.80 because remember, we had all that sideways action. So the question is, can we get a dip back down to test that level at around 151.80? So in order for that to happen, if you notice here, if we line up the close on this day and the open on this day, we have somewhat of synchronicity at around 154.28. Let's call it 154.28 to 154.30. If for some reason we start to see the dollar break down against the yen under that level, then yes, it is possible that we would see at least some kind of a reversal where the dollar gets a little bit weaker against the yen and if that happens under 154.30 of course what we could be looking at very quickly is a move down to around 153.35 then 153 and of course ultimately at that 150.180 let me show you what that looks like right here it's right eh, just a little bit lower here there you go, in this level. So this is where all that consolidation happened. On the flip side, considering the momentum is good, obviously we get through two days high. Again, uncharted territory, we can see where it goes, but also think of the implications to silver, oil, some of the other commodities, and of course the SPX as I showed you at the very beginning. Okay, that's it for now. You all have a great day. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week. Bye for now.